has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in him. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy path throughout the universe display then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art O oh lord how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Great is the Lord, and is greatly to be praised in the city of our God. In the mountain of his holiness, his beautiful for situation, the joy of the old is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. It's Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Lord. You are the sound of my music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I sing. You are the mighty God. You are the God of God. You are the King of all kings. Now I return to you the song that you gave to me. You are the song that I sing. Now I return to you the song that you gave to me. You are the song that I sing. I'll sing of your majesty through all of eternity. For you are the song that I sing. I'll sing of your majesty throughout of eternity. You are the song that I sing. Wonderful, marvelous are the works of our God. Praise to the Lord. Wonderful and marvelous are the works of our God, praise to the Lord. Oh, wonderful, marvelous are the works of our God. Praise to your name. Wonderful, marvelous are the works of my God. Praise to your name. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, holy, 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 holy. 
is the Lord God Almighty. The elders and the angels bow. And the redeemed, we worship you now. We're saying holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord. The elders, the angels bow. We the redeemed, we worship you now. We say holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Oh, the elders and angels bow. The redeemed, we worship you now. Lord, we say holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow. And the redeemed, we worship you now. We say holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. For thou, only thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things and for all thy pleasures they are, and were created. Thou art worthy, Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. Lord, thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are. One were created, Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in you and I worship you, Jesus. The mighty one, I believe in you, and I praise your name, Jesus, the greatest one, I believe in you, I believe in you. Jesus, the most high God, I believe in you and I worship you. Jesus, the greatest one, I believe in you. And I praise your name, Jesus, the excellent one. I believe in you and I worship you from age to age. You are the same, oh Lord, you will never fail. From the rising of the sun to its going down, oh Lord, may your name be praised. From the rising sun to the going down, oh Lord, may your name be praised. Thank you, Lord, we thank
you will never change from the rising of the sun to its going down oh lord may your name be praised hallowed be your name oh god hallowed be your name in all the earth Let's begin to worship his name. Let's call him the name that he is, the God of all season, the healer, the restorer, the God of excellence. We give you praise, the Lord, our strength, the Lord, our cause, the Lord, our confidence, the Lord, our confidence. We give you all the praise. We exalt your holy name. We say, Father, forevermore, be exalted, be glorified. We thank you. You are the God of mercy. Let's just lift our hands and just worship and thank him. Lord, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord, for mercy. We thank you, Lord, for mercy. Every day we see the flow of your mercy. We are grateful, Lord. We are thankful, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We give you all the praise. Thank you for the way you father us. Thank you for the way you lead us. Thank you for the way you help us. Thank you for the way you bless us. Father, be thou exalted, O God. Blessed be your holy name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Over to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Hope we are blessed. Oh, thank you very much, Sister Shade, for that wonderful ministration. It's always a it's always a breath of fresh air to, to hear and to experience God moving in our midst and to be blessed with the uh, what would I call it? Be blessed with a ministry or a leader of a ministry that can bring on the presence of God at will. It's nothing to be joked with. Thank you very much, Ma, for your wonderful contribution just now. I would also like to thank the pastorate, that's Pastor Tosin Popoala and Pastor Kayode Popoala, as well as Pastor Isaac, who chased me down, rightfully so, to give me this blessed opportunity to minister the word. Um, I've learned recently that you are a true Christian, a part of your, you know, when you're struggling, like I have been sometimes with your identity in Christ, one of the things that remind you that you are truly in Christ is when you have that zeal for the things of, for serving in his house. So, oh, forgive me. My video is not, for serving in his, in his house, serving in his ministry. So every opportunity I get just like this, I need to be grateful. So before we start, let's please bow our heads in prayer. Um, I pray, Heavenly Father, that the words that I'm about to release, Lord, on this platform, Father, that they will be edifying. Lord, I pray that I will not misuse this platform, Father, to, to speak the truth, to speak the knowledge, Lord, the unfiltered truth. I pray that you arrest my tongue, Lord, that your Holy Spirit guide me, go before me and speak through me, Father, and bring no confusion to anybody listening that has lent me their ear here in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Good morning, church. I don't care the time. It's morning for me. Morning re resembles. Morning for me is like, uh, is the start, is the fresh. And right now we're about to jump into something. So there's a freshness to it, right? So good morning, everybody. If you have a neighbor beside you, greet him, say good morning, give them a hug, give them a kiss. We're a church of love here in City of Mercy. Praise the Lord. Okay. Without taking too much time, we are, I should hope anyways, aware of the theme of the month which is Excelsior, Excelsior. Somebody say Excelsior, say to your neighbor, Excelsior. And the Bible text for this theme is taken from Revelations chapter four, verses one. Can I get that please, technical? Revelations chapter four, verses one. That is where our text for this theme is taken from. Hey, Technica. Brother Daniel. Okay. No problem. I'm going to try and get it here on my phone in the absence of uh, 
or in the interest of time. Uh, Revelations 4. The devil is already trying me, eh? Don't worry, I have something for you. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, it says, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you the things which must take place after this. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Um, so our theme, Excelsior, relates to higher, ever upward, increase, higher planes, above and beyond. So those are the ways I was breaking it down to myself when I was creating these, these notes that I'm using here. And that's, in fact, the literal definition of it online is higher and ever up. Oh, thank you, Technica. Thank you, Technica. God bless you. Better late than never. Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Excelsior means higher, ever, upward. Um, and that could be in any field. It should be in every field for us as Christians. We are conquerors. We are overcomers, right? As many people say. Um, it, whether it's in our endeavors, in our fields, in our workplaces, higher, ever, up, or maybe most importantly, in our relationship with God. Praise the Lord. Um, now, you guys know, or I should hope you know, that I every time I am given the opportunity to come up and share the word, I make it my goal to preach something or to preach from a dimension or a perspective, should I say, that has not or has not commonly been preached before. So in this theme, my goal was to some way, somehow preach in a, in, with a perspective that uh, Pastor Paula hasn't yet, uh, who else? Sister Shade, bless you as well, hasn't yet in the past Digging Deeps and, and like two weeks ago. And so my title for my sermon today is Excelsior Limitations. Somebody tell your partner, Excelsior Limitations. Yes, I've taken the path less trodden excelsior limitations or limitations to excelsior right um and the reason i'm doing it is because i want us to take a little taster course let's call it taster course into the things that can limit excelsior we have understood hopefully by now not just from this today but also with pastors preaching and sister shadi we've understood that excelsior has to do with upgrading higher plane higher level so what can limit you? What can stop you from reaching that level? As important as it is to understand Excelsior and, and you know, the benefits of Excelsior and whatnot, let's also, it's also equally, I would, I would argue, as important to understand what can keep you from the, reaching that level. Amen. So hence the title, Excelsior Limitations. I also say taster course because, as you can imagine, just with many things in the Christian faith, it's not as simple. It's not as complex. There are a lot of things that I'm sure we are already aware of that can hold us from reaching the higher plane, right? Um, but I can't do a whole extensive, comprehensive list. I came up with eight, not the, not the best eight, not the most important eight, but at least eight in the interest of time, um, limitations to Excelsior. Praise the Lord. Okay, so the first one, in fact, I love crowd engagement. Let me open the chat some way, somehow. I love crowd engagement. I already seen that there's been some chat. Excelsior Limit. Ah, see, the popolas are already encouraging me, my people. Thank you very much. So, the first limitations to Excelsior. Yes, of course. Now, as I am going, the first task I have for everybody here, please encourage me now. Um, Give me an example, give me what, put in the chat what you think are some limitations to Excelsior. And I will give the first one I have on my list, which is fear. So as I'm explaining fear, please, if any come to mind as the Lord leads you, give us in some chats, give us in the chat your examples of what can limit Excelsior. Praise the Lord. Oh, wow, we're already bubbling. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Keep going, please. Let me, let me not be too distracted. Time is not on our side. So I start with fear. And I say that fear itself is a spirit. I know somebody here doesn't believe me. Fear is a spirit. So please, technical, if you are still with us, can I have 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7, please? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. We should know this one off by heart. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Hallelujah. Technical. 
Okay, well, it says, um, for he has given us not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and... Oh, thank you. Technical, I hope you are with us. God bless you. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So that is your biblical proof that fear is a spirit. We're just defining it first. That's the, 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 the format I'm going in. We define and then we explain. So fear, as we see it here, is a spirit. That's unwillingness to do something you should do. That's, that's feeling of shock or that feeling of, of, of captivity almost that doesn't allow you to do, to progress, to proceed. That is fear and it is a spirit. And we have seen here, biblically, God does not give us that spirit. God does not give us that spirit. You see, when fear consumes us, we limit our usual capacity. Talk less of Excelsior, do, Excelsior Domeno. Our tip, our normal capacity is limited when fear is in the equation. Because fear blocks our spiritual senses. We can see that fear is a spiritual thing here. Nobody should argue with me. Fear is a spiritual thing. So it blocks our spiritual senses. So let's, <clears throat> let's be privy to that. And we have, um, I'm sure we've seen um, some like videos or TikToks or whatnot of that um, wonderful fact that, oh, the Bible mentions the words do not fear or fear not 365 times in the Bible. In my research, I found that not to be true. Okay, there's about 137 fear-related verses, which kind of disappointed me because I wanted to use that fact in this preaching. But um, anyways, hold on, the chat is, is bubbling. Let me see. Oh, my people, thank you, self, bitterness, yourself, distraction. Procr procrastination is one of mine. Thank you very much, Mr. Obey. Pride is one of mine. Thank you, Brother Daniel. Or maybe that's Sister Lavaka's son. Whichever. God bless you. Jealousy is one of mine. Thank you, Michelle. Ah! Doubt is one of mine. Thank you, uh, Brother Valentine. And unforgiveness is another good one. Wow. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for the engagement. It's really encouraging. Oh. Best. Best. Okay. We are all the best. <laughs> and may God give the best for us. The best is what God will reserve for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, so yeah, um, the 365 uh, verse thing isn't true, but we do know of a lot of biblical verses that speak about fear. We have Psalms 23 verse 4, which says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou with me. We know that one. We know Psalm 91 5 that says, Ye will not fear the terror of night, nor the hour that flies by day. Know that one. Know the person that walking in darkness, nor the destruction that lays away sun and day. A thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand on my right hand. But it shall not come near me. Okay, we know Isaiah 41 10 that says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for someone finish that one. Do not be dismayed for first to finish it. To... Okay. My point is the Bible speaks a lot about not fearing. Not fearing. Even when an angel it makes himself present to somebody, he says, Do not fear or fear not. Fear is not something we are supposed to have, right? And <clears throat> as a child of God, when you become a child of God, the assurance you have from God is that you are free from the spirit of fear. Oh, thank you, Technica. Oh, wow. Fear not, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee. Yea, with the right of my hand, with the right hand of my righteousness. I'm being too silly. Forgive me, Father. Um, yeah, sorry. Let me wrap this section up. Fear is a tool of the devil to keep you in bondage. So we can't allow it into our hearts. Romans 8.15 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So we know that fear is a spirit, and we know that it's linked to bondage. Bondage, oh, bondage, oh. We are free from bondage in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, and the verse continues on to say, oh, thank you, technical. Technical, you're on point. Thank you. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So we have so many examples of fear mentioned in the Bible, all of which indicates towards us not having fear and also what fear seems to stem from, spirits and bondage, right? Um, making it, continuing to keep it relevant to what we're talking about, Excelsior, I don't think I need to paint too much of a parallel for you to understand that you are limiting yourself from Excelsior, however you want to, to, to use the phrase, Excelsior, or, or being a, a 
vessel of excelsior when you are in fear, when you are in bondage because of the spirit of fear. So that is our first limitation, fear. <clears throat> and listen, my encouragement for everybody here is when God is your daddy, you know that he calls daddy, that he calls God daddy. That's the type of relationship you should have with him. You have no reason to fear. Nobody is stronger than him. Nobody is wiser than him. Nobody is better than him. Nobody is more powerful than him. So whatever the situation, fear ye not. Let that be your new mantra. I will not fear. Fear ye not. Encourage your friends. Fear ye not. Now, God bless you to Brother Valentine because you got it. You got it. The next one is doubt. Doubt, doubt, doubt. I picked this one in order. I ordered everything. You know, doubt, as you can see, is not fear, but it's linked to fear. You know, you can still be not afraid, but doubt, right? Okay. New exercise for somebody. This is going to be the next common exercise. Can someone, as I'm going on in the in in my in my sermon here, somebody tell me who in the Bible had doubts? There's the most popular example. One of the disciples, isn't it? His name was some. His name was doubting something. So we have that one. And Thomas, God bless you. God bless you. Seat of mercy. And then any more examples you have of people who doubted in the Bible? We're coming to that anyways. So um, we all know what the feeling of doubt is. Just that feeling of uncertainty. You're not sure. You you know, you, you're not, you're not, it's not confirmed in your head. And because of that, your 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 actions, your thoughts, everything is 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 reluctant. That's a new word for somebody. Reluctant. You're reluctant when you when you have doubt. You don't move in confidence. You don't move in assurance. You don't move with um a a surety that this is what you're supposed to do. This is where you're supposed to be when you are doubting. And if we're talking about excelsior domain, higher planes, improvements, up higher, ever upward, how can you do that when you're not sure that's the right direction? How can you do that when you're not sure that's the right direction? You know, there's a scripture that talks about the Bible being a lamp onto our feet, a light to our path. I may have flipped it the wrong way. Why is it? As, why is it? Why is the Bible being described as something that? illuminates our path because the bible gives you that surety that this is the right direction have you ever walked in the night my mom describes to me that i don't know what night is i said what do you mean so who do, who do you think you are i know night she said no she said in the village this night that i walk home now i'll be coming home to 3 a.m that uh, street lights on it said when you come home when you're in the village walking home there's something what they call pitch black you don't know where you are going you have no clue so that we have not experienced darkness yet. And I believe her. I believe her. I definitely believe her. What's my point there? We are walking in with street lights and, and that's what gives us our surety that this is the way home. When we're, when we're coming home from it in, in, in the night, you know. Praise the Lord. So um our Bible, our which is uh our word, our our manual for life, describes itself as the path of the, the light that, that brightens our path. So when you have, you know, metaphorically speaking, when you have an idea of where you're going, you're sure of where you're going. And when we are excel, and when we are excelsiors, if I'm using it correctly that way, <clears throat> we want to go above, we want to go higher, we want to reach higher planes. We need to not have doubt. We need to not have unbelief. We need to be sure of ourselves. Praise the Lord. Let me have a quick look at the chat. Thomas, Thomas, uh, Peter, Peter, okay, good. Zachariah. Zachariah, who's that? Michelle. Hey, Michelle, welcome. Okay, perfect. Um, what I say about doubt? I said one thing we believers, one thing we believers are to be sure of is our identity in Christ. Just like with fear, the devil is only powerful to those who doubt their identity, which in turn is their power. Some people might not catch that. Your identity in Christ is your power. Your power. The devil pry, uh, roars around like a prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom to devour. And his favorite meal are those who don't know themselves, those who don't know their world. Okay, when we look at the standoff he had with Christ, if Christ didn't know his world, if Christ didn't know the things that he is sure of, he wouldn't have reached higher planes. That plan he had, that plan he executed, glory be to to, to his name, for our salvation might might never have happened. If, if he didn't know his word, if he wasn't sure, how can somebody tell you, I'll give you the, 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 see, as the, as far as the land stretches, I'll give you all of this. Many people will say yes right now. Some in this chat too. 
Reflect on look up to yourself. <laughs> Maybe I'm one of them. As I point a finger to you, I point three back to myself. I'm no better than anyone. But um, it came from his confidence, his surety in what he knows, in what is right, in what is true. You want to reach higher planes? You want to be an Excelsior? You. You, you, you. You want to be an Excelsior? Do you? Is you I'm talking to now? Don't have any doubts. Praise the Lord. Okay. What does Google define doubt as? Google defines doubt as a feeling of uncertainty or lack of conviction. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to our examples. Who are we have so far? Sister Obey, give yourself a round of applause. Wow, Sarah, that's who I used. Sarah, I'm pretty sure, right? Let me check. Let me see. I think Sarah's one of the ones I used. Let me read on anyways. I'm, I'm going to off, off books. Um, so yeah, I said it here, of course, when we think of doubters in the Bible, <clears throat> the number one suspect is doubting Thomas. Well done to uh, RCCG Seat of Mercy and Sister Irie. Brother Irie Bankley. Sister Irie. Irie Bankley. Maybe that's Pastor Isaac. Uh, Pastor Isaac. Um, but he's not the only one. Doubting Thomas isn't the only one. Other examples are David, Elijah, John the Baptist. The list goes on. Can I have, please, do I have time for that? Oh, my Lord. Okay, maybe not. So Exodus 3, 5 to 12, I won't read it, um, speaks about Moses and his fear and his doubts. In fact, I'm going so fast that I even forgot the scriptures that actually inspired my sermon today. It was in Jeremiah. That's what I'm reading so far. I'm trying to read the Bible cover to cover, and I'm on Jeremiah so far. And something that happened to him that happened to Moses is that kind of like reluctance to do what God literally just told them to do. You know, I had a battle and I still go through this battle myself where I want God to speak to me as audibly as he did to, to the people in the Bible. Because I feel like if I can hear him saying what I'm supposed to do, how will I ignore it? How will I disobey, you know? Yet you have people in this text, Jeremiah being the current example, who when God said, go there, go there. He said, ah, but sir, how can he, how me, how? How, how, will God tell you to do something you, you, you can't do? That's the way they say, the same way they say that how there's no temptation that, uh, with every temptation that gives you a way of escape, he can't tempt you beyond what you can handle. Will the same, in the same vein, will he give you something you can't do? Yet Jeremiah and Moses had the same reaction when God called upon them. Ah, uh, but uh, wait, oh, uh, ah. Already focusing on their, on their shortcomings, focusing on their disadvantages. Okay. And these are not um, characteristics of someone that has Excelsior or an Excelsior, however you want to use the phrase, right? But anyways, they ended up being Excelsior. They went to higher planes and we still talk about Moses and Jeremiah today. So Valentine's Day is coming up. Valentine, who is your Valentine? Who is your Valentine? Okay. So because Valentine's Day is coming up, I said, let's use couples as the examples for doubts. So the first couple I used is Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, oh, no, let me catch them. They doubted God. You know, they weren't certain about God's instructions to not eat from the tree of knowledge. And certainty in God's command would have prevented them from doing what they did. They would have known better and it wouldn't have landed it where they landed them. See, doubt was the fuel to their catastrophe. And because of that, doubt robbed them of being excelsiors if you read in the bible in genesis we see that god had a plan for adam and eve correct me if i'm wrong bible scholars but i don't even believe uh death was supposed to be a thing i don't know how that would have worked everyone would have been live, living forever god wanted to create you know eden was um eden was the symbol of spirituality and physicality to one it was a spiritual and physical place in one and that was how god envisioned the earth and that's how we were supposed to be so connected with him. But they severed that time. Why would they do that? They severed that time. And one of the fuel behind that catastrophe was doubts. Doubts. If, the, if you, you know for, everybody in this chat here knows for sure fire is hot. So, so long as some common sense day here, you're not going to put your hand on fire. Because you know the repercussions. And there's no doubt to that. You have experienced, you have witnessed, and you have learned enough about fire to know that this thing will burn me so you won't put your hand in fire so long as, as again as i said insanity and common sense is still here you won't burn yourself so they didn't have that confidence in god's instruction and because of that lingering doubt however small it can be this small though, 
Same way faith of a mustard seed. Doubt of a mustard seed. Ay, 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 ay. They can't die. They doubt that fuel that catastrophe could have been just something small like this. But that's all Satan needs. He feeds off it to hey, but let him catch you with that amount of doubt. That doubt was enough for them to disobey the person that created them, the person that sheltered them, fed them, and instructed them. They said, no, let's still see. Let's still see. Actually, it was women who, women who, I'm doing a strong, strong, um, I don't say crusade, let me not be disrespectful. I'm doing a strong movement of fearing women. They ruined everything. But that's another conversation. And I might be a bit biased. Praise the Lord. I'm going, to, I'm going overboard again. Let me go back to my notes. Forgive me. Abraham and Sarah, they're the other ones. Oh, sorry. See where they landed us now? Yes, I'd be. But let's not go too far. Abraham and Sarah. Sarah doubted God. And we see that in Genesis 18, 13 to 15. I put a lot of scriptures, but I don't think you can read them. Um, and I said here, you can't easily blame Sarah because at her old age, it was unheard of. And by human logic, it was also impossible to birth a child. But she forgot we serve God of possibilities. Holy, holy are you, Lord. God of possibilities. We serve a God of possibilities. A miracle worker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. I don't know that song. So look again at what God told her. God said, um, oh, that's that's uh, in the Bible text. I said, if you read it, it said, God said, oh, why are you laughing? He told Abraham, said, why is she laughing at me? He said, why is she laughing at me? I will do it. Um, said, this this time next year, she will birth a child. You know, God God told her, ah, this, will this, this will happen. He prophesied it. He's God. He can do everything, right? Um, now, Sarah doubted at the start, but of course, she eventually had faith. And to link it to our next thing, I want us to look at who gave her that faith. It was Abraham. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> we need men who, we even should have more men in the world than women. I don't know why there's more women in the world. But anyways, let me not be too biased. Forgive me. Um, Sarah was blessed to have Abraham on her side, a dear friend of God, as he's described in the Bible. And it's because of Abraham and his belief in and his, his, his non-doubts, let's call it, in God's plan, that as a result, Sarah was used. Sarah's womb, if we know our genealogy, was a womb that generated the nation God said he would bless. Remember when God said, oh, they even called it the Abrahamic blessing. When they said that um, Abraham, uh, he will make, he said, oh, they, he will make your, your offspring as plentiful as the sand on the beach and the stars in the sky, something like that. You know, that blessing came from Sarah's womb, oh, Sarah's womb is not the same as anybody else's womb. Mm -mm. Her womb is different to your womb. Okay, she reached a higher level, Excelsior. She did. She reached a higher level. However you want to see it, phrase it, she reached a higher level. And the limiting factor could have been doubt, as it was in the case of Adam and Eve. But it wasn't. She didn't allow doubt to... Well, Abraham didn't allow her to allow doubt to spoil that Excelsior moment. Praise the Lord. And that's little role abraham played brings me on to the next one the next one is somebody take a guess somebody take a guess what's the next one next time what role did adam play was in the uh, abraham play what was the next one somebody go three two i don't have time more. the next one is community praise the lord your community hallelujah community community is the next one and in here in community we're talking about in the two ways two ways that community is relevant to you and in your journey to being an excelsior or in your journey to achieving excelsior right and the two ways i mean is both in the people you're surrounded with that's your tribe and your environment itself <whistles> somebody say <whistles> somebody say i feel you're so wise type it for me please encourage me somebody say i feel you're so wise okay in the meantime can i have please i'm Technical, let me uh, engage you again, please. Can I have Proverbs chapter 13, verses 20? Proverbs chapter 13, verses 20. Um, we're talking about community, both with the people you're surrounded by, that's your tribe, and your environment. So thank you very much. It says, KJV, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Hey, that one is sharp. The other version I was looking for, the one they said... Uh, a companion of, of fools uh, shall shall bring upon themselves harm, you know. 
But yeah, I guess, yeah, shall be destroyed as well. Yes, yes, we stand on that. Yeah. Okay, the passion translation. If you want to grow in wisdom, spend time with the wise, walk with the wicked, and you'll eventually become just like them. Eh, eh, mellow. Eh? <laughs> Sometimes I like mellow, not always harsh. But yes, exactly that. Oh, another one. Wow, technical. Become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. Okay, that's harsh again. I like the I like the passion. You know, sometimes I like ear tickling preaching. <laughs> Pleasant one. Okay, thank you. We'll do amplified as well. He who walks as a companion with wise men is wise, but he who associates with self-confident fools. Ooh. So foolishness is also self-confidence. Maybe I read it wrong. Um, is a fool himself and shall smart for it. That's an interesting one. And shall smart for it. Praise the Lord. In the interest of time, I think I have above. 10 minutes um and we're only on our third let me speed through this so our surrounding and our people um um i could be vague and talk about the bible's uh connection to just general friendship but the theme is excelsio so we're going to look at where the two themes of community and excelsio interlink as i'm going through my examples people give me examples in the chat of where your surrounding was important in the Bible in, re in regards to excelsior. Surrounding was important in the Bible in regards to excelsior. Let me see who's on point. I'll give the first one anyways. Can I have please Daniel 2 chapter 49, uh, Daniel chapter 2 verse 49 please, technical. Daniel chapter 2 verses 49, we're looking at how your community, the people you're around, the people you associate with, your neighbors, how they can influence you in this journey to excelsior. Technica, no for my hand now. We're doing too well, so it's just there. Yeah. Technica. Thank you, Technica. And Daniel requested of the king, and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel remained in the gate of the king at the king's, at the king's courts. Praise the Lord. What happened there? Daniel requested that the king appoint his friends, his peers. Hey, over the province of Babylon. Praise the Lord. See, a good community to have uh, involves or includes people that look out for you, that elevate you to higher and better positions. See, in this life, eh, the Bible even itself has things about it. We can't do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Community is important. So your rise to Excelsior, your Excelsior journey might not just be by yourself. In fact, it's unlikely that it's just you and yourself. That's what we call destiny uh, helpers anybody heard of that destiny helpers in this life we have destiny helpers and our prayer should actually be that god will locate us to our destiny helpers and so shall it be for us in the mighty name of jesus and clearly here daniel was a destiny helper are you a destiny helper are you a destiny helper with your blessing do you bless others or do you eat it all for yourself be a destiny helper um the next example please uh technical second kings chapter 2 verses 9 and then we'll do 15. So 9 and then 15. I want to give a couple more examples. I won't be able to go through all these examples. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. That's what Elisha requested of Elijah. Now, can we get verse 15, please? To see the result. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. So when Elijah was taken up into the sky with the with the chariots of fire, of, I hope I'm not mixing the stories. But Elijah did leave, and as promised, Elisha witnessed his his you know ascendance or his ascent. Um Elijah blessed Elisha with a double portion of his spirit, as promised. And the relevance of that to us to us is that in our community it's important it's important to have people who don't mind elevating you above themselves Woo! someone say woo! in this world so many people want to see you afloat they don't want to see you progress so long as you're you, you, you're, you're floating they're okay not doing better than them we also need to surround ourselves in a community of people who don't mind you being better than them especially if they themselves can't reach that level I've seen some terrible evil in this world, though. Some people, there is a, there's a level they can't reach, but they don't want you to go there, even though you're more capable. That's your level. The level is, is, is created for you. They don't want you to go there because they can't reach there. Hey, 
inspect your group. So if you're seeing signs like that, pray about it. And then, yeah, maybe maybe start taking them out of the place, man. Start, start, you got to watch your circle. Is it not, uh, Minister Dulce Oyeka? He said it this year, very uh, sobering message. He said, oh boy, it's the year to change your friends. Look for all these uh, traits. Um, we won't bother going into it. Ruth 1, 16 to 17. We know the story of Ruth and Naomi. Um, you know, very strong themes of loyalty. And I said strong, excel, strong excelsior bonds can be formed between different ages in any place. It's important to have people in your corner who will stick by you until the end. Praise the Lord. Proverbs speaks about um, a, a brother, something, something, but a friend sticks sticks like a brother anyways loyalty you need a lot of loyalty in your in your group people that will stick by you to the end people that will help you and people that will progress you even when things are looking shabby even when things are looking shabby you've opened a clothes store nobody has purchased but they are still with you shopping your things around wherever they go whatever country hey my friend has this store would you like to people who will stick by you to the end when things are looking rough they are still with you man i have 10 minutes left okay and an environment. This is the environment's portion of community. Um, Brendan Praise, if anybody knows him, let me blow someone's mind. He said, we often focus so much on the thing. You know, the, you know, when you're saying something deep, you do this. If anybody watches preachers, I don't even know what it means, but you do it. When you focus so much on the thing, oh, look at me. When you focus so much on the thing, you forget the environment that it's supposed to live in. I say that again. You focus so much on the thing that you forget the environment it's supposed to live in. Praise the Lord. So we serve a an, we serve an omniscient God, an omniscient God, however you want to pronounce it. A God that knows the end from the beginning. He knows what will happen before it happens. He knows what he gives you and he knows what he takes from you. And most of all, he knows that if he elevates you, you can, you can depress yourself. He can give you the desires of your heart, but he knows if you'll use it well or squander it. He can give, he can reward you, but he knows if that reward, you will turn it into a cost for yourself. Okay? That's the God we serve, a God who knows best. And that's another reason why we need to pray that we're either fulfilling his will or that what we're doing is aligning with his will, right? And of course, this is achieved through the help of the Holy Spirit. I mean, that be our portion in Jesus' name. Um, but what's my point here? God knows what he's doing. That's why they say God's timing is the best timing, right? And because he knows what it's do what he's doing and when he gives us things and, and when he takes away things from us, it's important for us to be aware of our surroundings. This is our environments. We're still talking about the environment portion of community, both physically and spiritually. First Peter 5, 8, please, technical. First Peter 5, 8 to, to, to solidify that point. And as you're getting that, I say, mind your environment. Let me, let me convict some people here. Some people here are praying for their kingdom spouse, but they are still struggling with lost oh thank you thank you technical be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may be devour be sober be vigilant the devil attacks us physically and spiritually be sober be vigilant thank you i won't speak too much on that but as i was saying some people here are looking for their kingdom spouse you struggle with lust you struggle with lust a woman walks by revealing clothes looking once is okay Looking twice means it was intentional. The first one could have been a glance. We too, I'm guilty. Of, as I said, as I point to you, be three figures to myself. You look once, it's a glance. You look twice, it was a choice. Ah, but, <laughs> but why are women would... Let me not even blame women. <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. I'm going to off, off point. Some of you are looking for your kingdom spouse. You're struggling with lust. Some of you guys are praying for financial turnaround, but every single penny that enters your account, you squander it. You are betting. You are sewing into concrete. You know, that's a mess for you. are sewn into concrete. You know, you're dabbling in fraudulent activities, trying to double it up, trying to mix it up. And your friends, they are all in fraudulent activity. So even when you're trying to be legitimate, it's difficult. Some of you guys are praying, this is me, you are praying to hear God more clearly, but you struggle to cultivate an environment for, of silence, of silence just for God to speak. You know, the Bible says, um, they love, preachers love using this when they talk about the time you spend with God, um, Jesus, Jesus said at some point, he said, oh, can't you just tarry with me for one hour? Right now, for some of us to be in God's presence for one hour is headache. It's a headache. It's too, it's too tough to just be in God's presence for one hour. 
My mom made a good, she opened my eyes. She said, we have 24 hours in a day, 10%, which is the tithes we give. 10% of 24 hours is 2.4 hours. How many of us can confidently say at least 2.4 hours a day we are spending in God's presence? Ah, but, yeah, Kaya. but you want to hear God's voice. Oh boy. Oh boy. So, you want God's forgiveness. You still hold grudges towards even the people in your own roof, under your own roof, family members. There's some people you've not called in years because of one argument on Christmas, but you want God's forgiveness. And all the things I've named, kingdom spouse, financial, financial turnaround, God's forgiveness, these are things that help us on the journey of Excelsior, but the things are also not afforded as, as well because of our own actions. So, man, you got to fix up, man. Your elevation can be tied to your environment. That's my point there anyways. The next one, let me see who said it. Somebody said it. Selfishness. Didn't someone say that? Self. I think that's what I what I was thinking was selfishness. Thank you, RCG Seats of Mercy. Man, I don't got time. Hold on. Let me go through this one quickly. Selfishness. Selfishness robs us of Excelsior because it makes us place undue emphasis on the things of this world and too little on people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. God says love. The most the greatest command is love God with all your heart and love your neighbors. A lot of us. You don't give a crap about our neighbors. All we care about are the things of this world. Money, fame, power, success. But boy, I'm in the pot as well. I'm not looking at anybody now. So in the interest of time, let's just look at two good examples and two bad ones of people who are selfish. Please, oh, where, are my, um, where are my contributors? Please, guys, oh, um, join me now. Please, selfishness. Examples in the Bible. Who was selfish and who... and. Give me, please, examples of who was selfish and and how that and who was robbed of their excelsior, let's call it, because of selfishness, and who evaded selfishness and, as a result, catapulted. I'll give one of each, so hopefully I don't take too many of the examples away. If people are still there, anyway. Esau, Esau, was Esau selfish? Was that selfish or was that cunning? I think we can. That RCCG seat of mercy. That's either mommy P or pastor. Either way. I can't argue with them. So Esau is one. Um, I was going to say, the ones I have here, is, I said the widow with olive oil who was um, blessed and you know her, her oil was multiplied and was able to pay off her debts. She could have been selfish with the little she had. In fact, you're more likely to be selfish when you have little. But she wasn't. And because of that, her, her, what, what the works of her hands was multiplied. Um, and then we have the lady who also gave her son, gave the food that um, she was preparing with her son to the prophets, God multiplied the tiny amount they had and they never ran out. Um, people who were selfish and it backfired or, or robbed them of Excelsior was like King Ahab, for example. We know he was <clears throat> married to <clears throat> to uh, Je uh, Jezebel, right? Yeah, Jezebel. And she was an evil woman. She was wicked. Um, king Ahab wanted something from another king. She killed that king, took it to Ahab and took it to King Ahab. He didn't even query how she got it, if I'm getting the story right. She didn't query how she got it. He, he didn't care about the well-being of who, who previously owned it. The unforgiving servant with the debt. The unforgiving servant with the debt. Are we looking at selfishness there? Maybe we are. Everybody's correct. The unforgiving servant with the debt, yes. I thought someone would give this example. Does anyone remember Ananias and Sapphira? Ananias and Sapphira. That's in Acts uh, 5, 1 to 11. We don't need to display that one. Where I'm, I have like four minutes left. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Ananias and Sapphira, they were um, selfish. They sold their plot of land when it was time to, um, what happened? When it was time to get the, uh, when it was time to, I, I think, account for the, how much they made. They were lying. And then, yeah, they just dropped dead. That one was a scary one because, oh boy, that's just, that's just one sin now. Come on. But listen. You can't argue with God. They robbed themselves of any opportunities for Excelsior because they robbed themselves of life. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. Praise the Lord. Who's it? Oh, praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Funny enough, that one is still not enough for what I have. So I will still speed through. But bless. Thank you, RCCG Seat of Mercy. Um, the next one I have is pride. Someone said pride. I want to give, I want to encourage people. Someone said pride. Daniel. Or brother Daniel or, or, or sister Labaka's son said pride. Thank you very much because pride is definitely, it's an obvious one. Pride is the attitude 
of self-sufficiency, of not seeking God, of 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 not being humble, of not being meek, of thinking, yeah, me, I can do. Pride. Ah, when I heard that pride was one of the seven deadly sins, I always thought to myself, how? How can it be up there? You know, pride. Oh boy, the older I grew, the more I realized pride is rooted in a lot of the things that we don't we don't even realize. Pride. You think, ah, oh, why did this person do this? It was pride. Pride, oh my days. It infects a lot of the actions we know are bad, but can't really put a pin on why. Pride. Um, so yeah, it causes us to see ourselves as higher, wiser, and or better than others. Sometimes even God. He, he. He's examples if you can, guys, in the chat. Hopefully we're not too tired. I know the Chelsea game is on. Oh, even me, I want to. Okay. Um, forgive me. The the examples of pride in the Bible. Who 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 um, allowed pride to rob them of excelsior? Somebody, please give me some examples. Some examples. Pastor Lee Chesina. Are you two not going to watch it? Satan, the best example. The best example. The best example. I learned recently that Satan's role, Lucifer's role in heaven was actually worship was being channeled through him. Worship was being channeled in the heavens. Worship was being channeled through him to God but he started to siphon off some for himself. The worship that was supposed to be channeled through him because he was the head of ministry of music and stuff like that. So worship was channeled through him to God from the heavens. So his the worship that was reaching God was coming through him, but he couldn't, ah, pride was, was, was biting him. He said, nah, let me siphon off some for myself. And when he did, he started to take away God's worship. Never you take away God's worship. Everything and anything that is good comes from God. So when you get it, you give praise straight back to God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. How many times did I owe for you? Three times. Give worship back to God. Um, anyways, yeah, Satan is probably the best example of that. He was prideful. And because of that, he robbed himself. That is the biggest robbery. He was right there in heaven with God. What kind of important role is that? To be the one that is that is amplifying and directing the channel of praise and worship to God. From that, you become the most Hated ah when I was young I used to feel bad for God, for Satan sometimes. Victory, victory, hallelujah! Jesus conquered the devil. Macha, macha, I will be stepping up. I'll be like ah, but then you learn of what he did, and the truth is we're all kind of guilty of pride sometimes. So let's just thank God for for favor and mercy and grace, right? What else? Thank you, Michelle. Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt was so prideful. How many Moses gave how? You would think that's what I'm saying. Pride is so scary. They, 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 they plagued your people. They plagued your your city that you're supposed to overrule with what was it like? Water turning to blood, frogs, boils, leprosy, and all this type of stuff. Pride was saying, no, 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 not allowing you to to let people go. Who are you? You know what I mean? Pride held him, and because of that, hey, li, 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 he that pride, hey, yeah, yeah, such a funny person. He allowed them to go in his pride. He said, No, it was choking him that uh, someone can escape him, someone can be out there said, telling the story of how they escaped him. He chased them, peak race. He went there with chariots. He saw that ah, even after Lord have mercy, you saw that whoever these people are serving. Where part was powerful enough to split open the Red Sea, they were walking on dry ground. You said, "Eh, eh, eh, eh." What power did you ever display before to show you can fight someone with that? Pride blinded him. Pride blinded him, and because of that pride, he ran into the Red Sea. He ran. Pride didn't allow him to see the old boy. It's very possible that this Red Sea pattern is only for Domo, not for me. He ran! What a color. Boom! One day I'll even go to the Red Sea, see if chariots are still down there. Boom! Destroyed him. He could have been excelsior. He could have been used by God, a vessel unto honor. He said, no, pride, pride, pride. Ay, 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 ay. Any other examples? Thank you for that, Michelle. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, yes. In, in the interest of time, the game has even started. Not that I'm rushing, though. You never rush things of God. Never. That Hurry is the death of um, God's presence. So we're not hurrying, right? King Nebuchadnezzar was prideful. We know what happened to him. Was, is that the one? Yeah, King Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Turned into an animal, you know. 
um, Goliath, he, he, he insulted God uh, in front of his God's soldiers. Big mistake. The littlest of the army members, David, used stone, collect. King Herod, God bless you. Thank you, RCGCs of Mercy. Um, yeah, God hates pride. It's, it's con he, considers, he considers pride evil and wicked. Um, now I ask you, do you think God will elevate you if you suffer from pride? The Bible says, the, is it the meek or the humble? I think the friends of the virgin. The meek will inherit the earth. Oh, the Bible said he, 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 uh, is it that he casts down the, the prideful and he uplifts, the, he exalts the humble, the humble in hearts. Okay, um, somebody said jealousy. Who said jealousy? You're going to get a shout out. God bless you. I like people that are uh, engaged. Michelle, thank you, Michelle. She said jealousy. Jealousy can be a limiting factor to your excelsior. Why? Jealousy is the feeling or showing of an envious resentment towards someone's achievements, possessions, or perceived advantages. That's Google's definition. Can someone please give me a biblical example? Who was who was jealous? And who, who in their jealousy was robbed of excelsior? Jealousy, focusing on other, oh, why does he have, why does he have? You know, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not too in touch with Niger, but they say worry people. <laughs> They're very jealous. They're very, um, anyways, hopefully no one here is worried. Uh, you know, focusing on somebody else's blessing and somebody else's achievement and not focusing on your own. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. May that not be our portion. Kane, thank you. I think that's Sister Shade. God bless you. Miriam, I don't know who Miriam is, so I need to go and read that. Kane, Kane is who, who I am, um, I'm familiar with. We know what he, what happened with him. He was jealous of his brother Abel. Uh, his uh, offering wasn't accepted. He was angry. He didn't even ask himself, oh, I don't even think, well, the Bible didn't say it, but I doubt he even asked, oh, God, why didn't my own get accepted? He just got angry that someone else's did. And in his anger, he killed, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He killed his own brother, his own blood. Spilled his blood. Ah, la, 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 la. And when God asked, where is your brother? God knows who. What did he say? Using cheek, as we call it. Cheeky, yo. He said, uh, am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> <laughs> am I my brother's keeper? You just killed him. Am I my brother's keeper? They should have sounded him a slap. But instead, he got worse. They, uh, yeah, yeah. they cast him out. Be gone. I learned recently in the history of, um, you know, the Bible and whatnot that, uh, you know, because someone asked, oh, why is, the, you know, why did God allow killing and whatnot? Killing in the Bible. His Reverend uh, Kessiana Siri he said, um, most of the time that they were killing, that God uh, uh, allowed killing. It was the descendants of Canaan. Go and do your history. The Can descendants of Canaan, those that rejected God, they, they, their utmost progeny, their, their first progeny, Canaan, rejected God and, and started that line of, of murder and started that line of homicide. And, and, and hey, God was always cleansing that, that, no problem. If that's the place, you, is that where you're going to have war with his progeny, with his offspring? Cleanse them. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going too far. Mary and Moses' sister. Okay, thank you. Joseph's brother, Sister Labake, you are blessed. That was my other example. Joseph's brothers. Joseph's brothers. The head of Joseph's dream, that uh, the sun and the stars who bow to him, and they said, no, no, you're not ruling over us. No way. They were jealous of his dream. Do you think that because someone is being elevated beside you, your own is, is, is dulled? You won't be elevated? Uh, yeah, yeah. If that's your mindset, change it this 2024. They could have been the advisors. The, they could have even been some way, some way. I don't know how God works. Joint, joint uh, what was the word for, for Joseph's role? Joint, um, let's call it Tishok. Joint prime minister. Joint, uh, what is it? I think it's prime minister Tishok anyways, of Egypt as well. But they blocked their own blessing. They limited Excelsior because of their jealousy. Praise the Lord. Um, second in command, thank you. Cora and Co. Yeah, I don't know Cora either. RCCG Seat of Mercy. Please, will you take uh, next week digging deep and explain these people? I got no clue. Maybe I got to get back to my word. Um, the last two, oh man, 807. The last two are delay and we'll start with delay. Um, Pastor Femi Lazarus. Gave a fantastic quote just in time for me yesterday in one of his uh, uh, live videos. Because, you know, everyone's doing fasting now. You know, everyone is fasting. I guess I didn't realize it's the season of fasting. Um, but I'm fasting away before somebody somebody gets on me. Um, 
Delay and process look the same, but only one, only one produces results. I say it again, delay and process look the same, but only one produces results. So you could be in a season of delay and you think, oh no, this is just a process. Hey, no result comes in the end. No result comes in the end. I want that to stay with someone. Delay and process look the same, but only one produces results. And the day you dis you you define that uh, delay as process, you legalize it. And that's why we have to be careful. When you define your process, your delay as process, you legalize it. No, let's uh, let may God open our spiritual eyes, our spiritual senses, so realize when we are in a season of delay and not in process. And I give an example. Um, can I have please, brother Daniel, or technical Daniel? Hey, brother Daniel, give me Daniel. Daniel. 10 verses 12 to 13. I learned this example recently as well. I've not yet reached Daniel in my reading. So Daniel chapter 10 verses 12 to 13. Um, thank you. Then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel. This is an angel speaking to uh, Daniel, or an archangel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. That's the angel saying, we heard you since your first time you were praying, and, we're come, and, and, and I have come. Sorry, thank you. Uh, verse 13, please. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. I don't know if that's 120 days or 21 days. Um, but lo, Michael. One of the chief princes came to help me and I remained there with the king of kings of Persia. What does that story entail? Daniel was praying. You know, we know the Daniel fast now where you don't eat, um, you only eat, you only eat fruits, veggies and whatnot, right? You don't eat meats and, and red meats and all that type of stuff. Daniel was fasting and praying, following procedure, following protocol, following process, right? And he assumed the delay in his answer was just process. Whereas it was delay, somebody was fighting against the answer to his prayer. So it was not normal what he was experiencing. That prayer, look, the angel said himself, the angel said, I heard you on the first day. I was supposed to be here. The kingdom of Persia, he withstood me. So that was abnormal. He was under, he was experiencing delay. And that's another thing. Delay, it's not something all most of the time anyways, that we influence or we bring to ourselves, delay can be an external force, which it was the case here with the kingdom of Persia. So delay is another thing that can limit our excelsior, limit our going up. Delay, delay. I was hoping someone would give me an example without me saying, but the other one in the interest of time is the Israelites. We know about them, 40 years, their inconsistent love for God, their recurring disobedience and, and unfaithfulness. And the prayer I would like all of us to pray in our own time is that your time in the wilderness will not be elongated. Your time in the wilderness will not be elongated because we will all go through the wilderness at some point. The Bible doesn't prophesy that, or the Bible doesn't, um, what's the word? Doesn't promise that, oh, you know, joining uh, joining the faith, joining the war on, on the kingdom of darkness will bring a peaceful life. Uh, the fact, In fact, the peace that God provides itself isn't even uh, no problems, no absence of storm. It's just his presence, right? So, there was a wilderness period for everybody. But pray that your time in the wilderness will not be elongated in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be followed in Jesus' name. And then my last one. Ah, we are here. 8-11. I'm very sorry, guys. Let me even put the game on at the side here. <laughs> I'm joking. I wouldn't do that. But I do want to check some scores. Okay. The last one is the delay that we caused. Did anyone say this one? Let me see. Someone did. I know someone did. The delay that we cause, well done, Sister Obehi, it's procrastination. That's the delay that we cause. You know, a bad, bad habit of some of our Christians. We like to, devil, devil, die. Most of the time, not most of the time, so much of the time, we are the, we are the, we are the authors of our own destruction. It's the devil, it's the devil, it's the devil. Devil didn't put marijuana to your lips. It's the devil, it's the devil, 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 devil didn't open that, that website. The devil, the devil, devil. Sometimes it's ourselves. So that's why I said I'll end on this note of what we cause, the delay that we cause. I'm still in the delay that we cause, and that's procrastination. And the procrastination act is defined as the action of delaying or postponing something. I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, uh, maybe, uh, let me do this now, and I'll do that one later. 
Um, and I saw a quote on TikTok that said, procrastination is the arrogance, arrogance that God will give you another chance to do today or to do tomorrow what he gave you a chance to do today. So it's the arrogance that God will give you a chance tomorrow to do what he already gave you a chance to do today. How do you know you will live to see tomorrow? How do you know, even if you live to see, when you live to see tomorrow, that you will have that same chance? It's an arrogance, okay? And I don't actually have any biblical examples of procrastination, but in Proverbs, it is littered with texts and advice and scripture about laziness and how the lazy man will want what the diligent man will wants uh, has but will never get it um you know the one that says uh uh a little fold a little a little sleep here a little sleep there a little folding of hands um poverty will come upon you like a thief in the night hopefully i woke somebody up wake up tell your neighbor wake up wake up wake up wake up we are just getting started tell your neighbor good morning no actually it's good evening because i'm at the end so that concludes my my sermon for today and I want to end on a prayer point for all of us that says, Father, let's pray this prayer now. It's in a and right now. Father, please open my eyes to where my limitations are. Father, please open my eyes to where my limitations are. Help me to recognize them cor and correct them with the power of the word in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Thank you, Sir and Ma. Thank you, everybody, for lending me your ear. Um, and that's me finished for today's digging deep. Over to you, sir.